so far we've uh, uh, done very very uh, simple configuration reading from a url.yaml file inside that file if you remember i'm going to open it now we set uh, all the urls we want to query every now and then and what i want to do today if you go back to the url checker you can notice that our way of handling handling configuration is very uh, very simple it all happens inside the url generator and we are reading a file and then using the yaml library uh, core library to parse the file and extract uh, the urls and and that's okay but as our application grows we might want to be uh, a bit more flexible in the way in the way we uh, read our configuration we want, might want to include some uh, fire bits of data about how the application should run, should run for example we might want to uh, set the number of workers and the interval at which we want to go and, and query the the um, urls so what i'll do is i'll so we'll see how we can just use some some simple convention to make our code a bit um, uh, qu quite slim we look into a yaml mapping which is a pretty neat feature of the yaml library in crystal and then we look into how we can uh, define custom deserializers to go from a, a yaml node to a type of our uh, of our choice even though that's not supported uh, out of the box uh, by the yaml library so to start i can go back I also want to verify that everything is going okay, right? So to start, I'm going to rename uh, url.yaml uh, into config.yaml. So I'm just going to rename this into config. So config.yaml is going to be this file and I can add a couple of parameters. One is the number of workers, which is going to be two for now. And then another one is going to be the period at which we want to query the URLs. So that's going to be two. And I'm going to say in a comment, that's going to be in seconds. We'll see in a second how we can make a sense of that number in the way, the way we want. So going back to the URL uh, checker main file, uh, what we'd like to do ideally is we'd like to define a config as config.load and then without having to be too specific we can just by convention say the configuration is going to be at config.yaml and so all we need to do is really go and define what this config module is going to be about so inside library the library folder i'm going to create a new file that's going to be config config.cr we're going to define a module config and we're going to define a method on self so that we can call it directly via config dot something and that's going to be the load mod the load um, the load method now we want this to be uh, quite uh, quite simple to use but at the same time we want this uh, module to be also uh, testable uh, as much as possible so we'll do something like this. We'll just define another self.load method that takes a configuration as a string and uh, returns a config. And then we're just gonna call uh, the same method from self.load. So we're just gonna assume that um, that um, value is set to be a particular file and we can actually just use a default argument so this is going to be file dot read config dot yaml and that should be it we're just going to be we're just going to close this to make it a bit more spacious so that should be it um so we call load uh, load uh, config and then we just look for config.yaml. Remember that you can remember that config.yaml is going to be resolved at the very root of the project because that's where we're running the um, what we're calling crystal from. Uh, so that's going to be resolved uh, correctly, I think. 
and uh, let's see what we can do inside this uh, inside this method. So let's first of all require the YAML module, and then go and scout for some documentation on the YAML module. So I'm gonna type crystal uh, YAML. We can go and see how we can use this. So always make sure you're looking at the latest version of the documentation. You can see how here we have. 0.23.1 which is quite old so I'm going to upgrade it to latest and that's going to go uh, straight to 0.31.1. Um, the part I wanted to show you is the one relating to mapping. So if I scroll down you can see that in this uh, section um, we can see how in this section we can map a we can define a deserializer for a particular uh, for a particular type, just by simply using this YAML mapping um, macro. So we're gonna see uh, how this can apply to our case. I'm just gonna copy paste this for now. So it's just inside the, this is gonna be a, a class rather than a module because we're actually building a uh, an instance of the config, of the, of the config class. We're going to have workers, we're going to have period, we're going to have URLs. Now the type for some of these is obvious. So this URL is going to be array of string, period is, so worker is going to be an int32. And for period, really, we can say int32 for now, and then we can see how we can define a custom serializer to make this better. And then looking back at the documentation, it's enough to just call uh, config dot from YAML and then just pass the string itself. So this is going to be config and that should be it really. So this should then resolve the configuration into um, an object that we can use and where we can uh, easily uh, read uh, all the very op various options. Now if we go back to this file, to the to the main file, we're loading the configuration, and then, um, and then let's see if this works. First of all, I'm going to save this and try and compile. And for now, we just uh, it should just we should probably require the config package so lib slash config. Now that should be a bit better. Yeah. And we still still compiling. Almost running. or maybe something is going on. Let me try this again. Nothing has changed, we're just running again. We haven't made any changes. But of course, uh, urls.yaml is no more, so we expect some explosion. Let's see. Yep, there we go. Error opening file urls.yaml, which is fine. And uh, we can change that. We can just make that config.yaml, and that should be enough to fix this. Just to uh, verify that everything is working fine. And we should see the familiar table. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so all good. So we're loading our configuration. I wanted to show you a bit of a quirk, something you need to know about 
uh, constants in uh, in crystal before you use them so we should be able to just do config worker here right so and define this worker constant now if i try and compile this i'm gonna get a suspicious message that says uh, undefined local variable or method config for top level and if i go and click uh, figure out where that happened that happens here right and this is a bit this looks a bit uh, suspicious because we're actually defining config one line above but the fact is uh, by definition crystal config uh, crystal constants have to be um, must be resolvable uh, at the very beginning of your uh, execution meaning they're the first thing that gets evaluated even before any other value any any other variable is set and so when we go in and evaluate the right hand side uh, of the workers assignment config doesn't exist yet because it's not a constant so what we can do to um, get around this issue is to just not use a constant a constant in this in this case so i'm just going to rename this to workers or we could actually just say config workers and get rid of the variable altogether so this is gonna work and the other thing uh, we uh, talked about is we'd like to also extract the config period but at the same time we would like to make it a time span rather than an integer and that's that's interesting because we can actually look at what a custom deserializer looks like in um, in crystal so in the meantime you can see that the application is running just fine with a, uh, a couple of workers so going back to the documentation for yaml if you scroll down a bit you can see that there is a bunch of there's a, quite a sophisticated uh, set of options that you can provide to customize the way you're deserializing the value from from the yaml file one of them which is actually here at the bottom is converter now the way this converter works is it expects to find a from yaml uh, from yaml, uh, YAML uh, method defined on the object you on the class you pass uh, to the converter and the documentation is good enough to point us in the direction of looking at how that's done uh, for other for other types so if i just look at the at the code itself for time which means i'm gonna go and look at the source code somewhere yeah there we go and there's yaml to yaml i think this is the one and i can look for uh, the time epoch millis converter and you can see all we need to do is to define a to yaml uh, method and actually in our case a from yaml method which is not defined here but somewhere else which is fine let's look it up There we go. I think we got the right one now. Right. So time format, for example, from YAML, and then it takes a context and a node and returns the particular object at, of the type you're looking for. I'm just going to use the time epoch converter one because it's a bit uh, simpler um, to use. Mind that, going back here, uh, mind that. Uh, time span is what we're looking for and time span is a struct rather than a module so this is going to be time span and then we just need to define a from yaml uh, method like this one so this is going to return a time colon colon span which we could also uh, leave the compiler infer and rather than going for time unix node value to i just going to turn that value the value we read into a floating point and then um turn it into seconds a time span in seconds 
Now with this, what we can do is we can change period into the period the mapping into an object where we go like converter is going to be um, in defined inside time span itself and the type which is the other fundamental bit of information uh, is actually going to be time span. Now let's see if this actually compiles and if it does then what we want is we want to do config config dot period and that should resolve to two seconds so let's try and run this still compiling which is a good sign um, let's see if we get the sense for a two second period once we start yep looks like a two second interval to me so we're good to go so just to recap before we move on uh, we looked at a uh, bunch of conventions that can help us make our code a bit a bit simpler um, in particular we can just assume that our configuration for our for our program is going to be defined uh, at the root level as a config.yaml file and then we can define a config class that um, that also defines a mapping from the yaml to the actual config object and then as you as you have noticed we can also go a bit further and uh, rely on custom converters to just read um, data through from the configuration into the right type for our application. This allows us to fail very, very quickly if the configuration provided is not uh, the expected one.